Do you want to write more papers for better journals this year? Do you want to finally finish your PhD thesis and get your PhD over with without working 24 seven, without feeling overwhelmed and stressed? Well, in this video, I want to show you a solution and I want to show you how you can write more and do it regularly and feel more confident and feel happier while doing it and avoiding all the negative emotions. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I'm the founder of Academic English Now, where we empower PhD students and researchers to publish research papers in Scopus Index journals. So in one of my previous videos, I talked about, you know, the four causes of inaction, right? Why you aren't taking as much action as you want to and why you aren't achieving the results that you want. And I broke it down to four things. And one of them was lack of self-discipline. So really the thing is that we rely too much on motivation and you write when you feel motivated to do. You, you go to the gym when you feel motivated right uh, sometimes you know I, I hear this these people when they say you know oh you know I'll, I'll go to the gym when I when I feel like it yeah well why didn't you write today well you know I just just didn't feel like it you know I just didn't feel the the sort of the motivation I didn't I didn't feel the enthusiasm for writing well if, if that's how you work then no surprise you aren't publishing more papers regularly because the thing about motivation is that it's it's fleeting, it's unreliable, it's something you cannot control. It comes and goes. And as a result, motivation is completely overrated. Instead, what you want to rely on and develop is self-discipline. Why? Because self-discipline is something you can control. It's something you can develop. Self-discipline is long-lasting and having more self-discipline will not only help you to write more papers for better journals having more self-discipline will benefit you in all areas of your life whatever you pursue um, outside of writing papers in the academia if you have self-discipline you will be able to achieve your goals faster and have more success okay so how do you develop ninja self Discipline. How can you become more so self-disciplined that doing the right thing, like for example writing papers, becomes effortless? It, it basically becomes a habit. You don't have to feel motivated to do it, you just do it. And when you do it, you feel happy to be doing it and you get amazing results. That's exactly what I want to talk about in this video and give you some tips on how to develop what I call ninja self-discipline. So. First of all, you want to be designing your environment because you know research shows that our environments have a huge influence over us. To give you an example, if in your apartment, right, you, you have a TV that's always on and maybe there's music playing and there is, you know, constantly somebody walking around your apartment, right, as you're trying to write, well, you're not going to be able to focus very well, right? If there are phones ringing, people going in and out of the office, right? Knocking on your door, you get constant notifications um, on your computer. You, you won't be able to focus. You won't be able to write. So our environment has a huge influence on how successful or how unsuccessful you are. So you want to design your environment in a way that promotes writing. So you want to design a space where you feel happy, where you feel comfortable and where you can focus much better, right? Now, you also want to make the good choice, the default choice, okay? So doing the, the good thing is usually difficult um, because it takes a lot of effort. That's why people quit the gym because, you know, it takes effort to go to the gym every day. It takes effort to write every day. It's painful. So that's why we avoid it right so you want to as much as possible make the good choice the default choice well what do i mean by that well if you for example finish your work day just close everything on your computer and the only thing you leave open is the word document that you're going to be working on tomorrow and then close your computer so that when you open it tomorrow the only thing that opens is that word document you know and there are no pop-ups no emails no notifications so the good choice writing your paper is the default choice right now you also want to make it as obvious as possible 
Um, what do I mean by that? Well, you want to place reminders for yourself everywhere of what you should be doing and importantly why you're doing it, okay? Because it will become much easier to do something if you constantly remind yourself of why you're doing it. Why are you writing every day? Because, you know, maybe you want to finish your PhD in the next six months. That's why you're doing it, you know? So remind yourself um, of it and make it obvious. The fourth tip is to also make it rewarding, right? So, you know, you probably all know about, you know, the, the research behind developing habits and part of developing positive habits is, is the reward that you get at the end, right? That's why we get so addicted to social media because we get these instant hits of dopamine, which, you know, are like drugs, basically. It's like heroin for our brain, you know? And that's why we continue scrolling. That's why you continue watching those YouTube videos because you get instant hits of dopamine and your, your brain gets addicted to that. It's basically like heroin for your brain, right? Um, but you want to do the same with, you know, positive things, right? So writing papers. So to give you a simple example, set a goal for yourself that if you write today for, let's say, two hours, but make that goal realistic. Or if you write 500 words today, you know, at least, again, make it realistic. You're going to give yourself a treat, right? For example, you're going to uh, make... The, a nice brew of coffee or you're going to go out with a friend you haven't seen for a long time or maybe you're going to you know watch a series on Netflix make it rewarding okay so that the end of that activity is rewarding and make it repeatable like that so that you can create a positive habit now another thing that you want to do is you want to surround yourself with the right people so again there's a lot of research that that shows that the people we surround ourselves with they have a significant influence on how successful or how unsuccessful we are so if you surround yourself with people who are negative well you're more likely to be negative yourself as well but if you sur surround yourself with people who are equally driven, with people who have similar goals, with people who want to work as hard as you do and write papers on a, on a regular basis, then you're so much more likely uh, to become successful, right? And you want to get an accountability partner if possible. That's why at Academic English Now, what we do is we pair you up with a coach who becomes your accountability partner. And we also encourage you to pair up with another PhD student or researcher who's on our program because that, that really helps with accountability and it helps you to surround yourself with the right people. That's why also at Academic English Now, we have a powerful community of other PhD students and researchers who are driven and who want to publish and who encourage each other to publish. And it's so much easier to achieve your goals when you are in an environment like this. And what you also want to do is try to make your bad habits invisible, okay? So, for example, if you tend to spend hours watching Netflix every single day, you know, you're not going to break that bad habit if you have a massive TV in your room because you will be constantly tempted to watch Netflix. And, and fighting that temptation is very, very difficult. So what you want to do instead is just get rid of the TV right? That, that's, the, that's the best thing that you could do. I don't have a TV at home and it's so much less tempting to watch TV because yeah, we just don't have it. You know, you have to kind of open your laptop, set yourself up and stuff like this, right? Just get rid of it. You know, same with other bad habits like, I don't know, maybe you eat too much chocolate or maybe you, for example, spend hours on social media. Just eliminate that temptation and it will be so much easier not to do it right? What you can also do if you can't eliminate it, you, you can put hurdles between yourself and the bad habit. So if you have the bad habit of picking up your phone when you're writing, just, you know, lock your phone in a cupboard or better still, leave your phone in the other room, right? So what I do if I want to do focused work, I leave the phone at home and I go to the co-working space and then I work. And then I can't pick up the phone because the phone isn't physically there. You know, I used to kind of scroll through the phone a lot before going to bed, which would affect my sleep negatively. Now I just leave my phone in the other room. So, of course, I can go and get it. I can get out of bed and get it. But it's so much difficult. And therefore, it's so much easier to be disciplined and do what I want to do and do the good thing. Right. And, you know, another thing that I want to talk about is mastering delayed gratification. So 
a lot of us are slaves to instant gratification, to those instant hits of dopamine that, for example, social media gives. But the thing about progress is this, you know, so think about, you know, success on the vertical axis and then time on the horizontal axis, right? Progress isn't linear. Progress doesn't change like this. Progress is exponential. And the thing is that, you know, for a very long time, we work hard, but we seemingly make no progress until we cross the tipping point and then progress becomes exponential. So in order to achieve success, you need to be always focused on the long term. And you cannot just be addicted to, you know, those instant gratifications because, you know, that the more time you spend on it, the more successful you're going to become. And the more focused energy you devote to something, the more successful you will become. Right? And remember this graph on the vertical line progress and on the horizontal line time. It takes time to achieve great things, right? So master delayed gratification. And finally, you know, also become aware of your habits, you know, because our willpower is finite. So trying to fight distractions, trying to fight bad habits isn't going to get you anywhere. You have to design the whole environment and develop habits that will make the, the, the good thing the default thing. Now, if you want more help with that, and if you want practical strategies to actually achieve that so that you can write more papers for better journals this year as a researcher or a PhD student, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below. We're going to get on a one-to-one -one personalized call, discuss your challenges, discuss your goals, and then see how and if we might be able to help you. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.